Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're keeping the tilt rotation over here so that we can capture more of that dinosaur. Mm -hmm. Start the scan. What you're noticing over here is that the first thing it's going to do, it's going to do a pre-scan. And this is where we're using the Intel RealSense camera. Mm -hmm. What we're trying to capture over here is, okay, here's roughly what the object looks like. Here, in the future, it's going to actually show the amount of time that it's going to take to scan the object overall and things of that sort. Mm -hmm. You can have a video of the whole process if you want. Yeah, mm -hmm. we can actually send that to you. Mm -hmm. So this is going for probably about another 30 seconds or so. Mm -hmm. At which point, like I said, you'll see the rough idea of what the dinosaur is. Immediately from there, mm -hmm. it's now going to start capturing the dinosaur itself in individual slices. What you'll notice is that the pie has been broken up into eight 45 degree slices. Mm -hmm. So every 45 degrees, another capture is being taken of the dinosaur. And then when it's completed this entire scan, it'll mm -hmm. take all those uh, slices mm -hmm. and merge them together. Mm -hmm. So that's like equivalent of one snapshot. Mm -hmm. Now you can see you're actually on the second slice right now, so you can already see that you've got a lot of the uh, composition of what the dinosaur looks like. Mm -hmm. So for most objects, 3D objects, you're going to want to do two to three scans or maybe four depending on the object. For instance, with this guy, mm -hmm. this elephant, you'll end up wanting to do a fourth scan because you want to capture the underside mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you can capture all these wrinkles. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily need to do it, but if you don't do it, it's going to smooth that over because there's going to be a gap there. And it's in essence going to say, okay, I'm going to interpolate what it is, and I'm going to make it flat skin. Mm -hmm. So that's why you do a fourth scan in this case. Okay, so we've done three slices, and like I said, you're mm -hmm. getting a pretty good idea of mm -hmm. what that dinosaur is going to shape like. Yeah. After it finishes the eight slices over here, we'll orient the dinosaur in a different orientation, mm -hmm. and we'll run another scan on there again. Mm -hmm. And then we'll do that one final time over here as well. The, again, the purpose over here is that mm -hmm. this is the first fully integrated 3D solution for people mm -hmm. without necessarily having to have a PhD in 3D engineering or 3D anything for that matter. Mm -hmm. If I ask 10 different people out there, what does 3D printing mean? I'll get 10 different answers. Because in this case, what happened here is that 3D printing technology came out first mm -hmm. without fully defining what the problem statement is for, for people. Mm -hmm. In this case, what I did here is I started out with a frog mask. Mm -hmm. From this frog mask, I then personalized this. I added the spikes over here. I created the tongue so I could have this type of object going. Mm -hmm. Or this printer only does it in one filament. Over here, what you notice is that I'm changing filaments every about, I don't know, 25% through where I start out with black, then I went to white, et cetera, mm -hmm. in order to make this something unique. In the future, I do expect people are going to be able to create things without having to start with a generic object. Or in the case of Ben Franklin over there, we're physically putting clay on top of Ben Franklin, making him into Klingon. Mm -hmm. People will get more comfortable with the software itself, that they can feel, okay, I don't need to necessarily start by starting out with clay in the first place. I can do it all software-based. Mm -hmm. Now let's go back to use cases for a second. Mm -hmm. We talked about the scan to share type thing. I talked about the baby shoes. Another one over here is roses. When girls get roses or flowers for their first time, mm -hmm. what do they typically do? They want to maintain that memory, so they'll, they'll press the flower mm -hmm. in between a couple books. Right? Mm -hmm. If I could actually take that rose, scan it in, mm -hmm. and then maintain that for posterity, or share it with my girlfriends, etc., mm -hmm. then they can actually see what the roses are that Brad gave me. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but things mm -hmm. like that is where the creativity comes into play, because it's not necessarily mm -hmm. even manipulating that rose, it's just maintaining it. Mm -hmm. Right? Or kids today in school, whether you're talking about K through 12, or you're talking about college, they're trying to create the next generation mousetrap. Mm -hmm. They're probably starting out with something and then building upon it from there. But they don't necessarily need to take the time to print the thing out and get feedback from other students, from the teacher, from people out in the workforce. Mm -hmm. They're able to do it all virtually. Let's take that same scenario, but apply it to the workforce area. If we're coming up with the next generation of a product, mm -hmm. Now, normally, typically, you create a prototype of it. You create that prototype and you 3D print it or you do a small batch of manufacturing. And then you go up and get additional feedback. You involve other engineers in remote locations. You involve customer support. You involve marketing. If I can do all that virtually where people can interact mm -hmm. and see what this next generation product is going to look like, give their feedback, I can reduce the amount of time from an R&D perspective. I can increase the time to market. I can mm -hmm. increase the revenue for the company, all because I have the ability to do 3D virtual sharing, virtual printing, etc. Mm -hmm. This is pretty much done. Yeah. So it's mm -hmm. it's merging these scan surfaces right now. Mm -hmm. So after after each snapshot, 
you shot you saw them mm -hmm. all kind of piled up on top of each other. Mm -hmm. Now it's actually digitally fusing all that data into one solid. So this was just once one into, pass. Into one surface. Mm -hmm. And you can see the level that it was done at. Now because we did it just on this side, uh -huh. hence the reason why you only got half of it, right? Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, you can use both screens on this to zoom in and out or to rotate it around, etc. as well. So now it's interactive so the user can look to see what surfaces still need to be scanned. Mm -hmm. That's part of the making this con con a consumer friendly solution mm -hmm. is that you give them a lot of guidance and visuals to identify what's the next step. So you just flip it over and get yeah, the Yeah, so in this yeah. case what we'll do is we'll put in this rotation over here. Okay. You don't want to turn it too much mm -hmm. so that you don't have overlap between the, the two adjacent scans. Mm -hmm. So in this case, if you flipped it all the way over, you may not have enough in common between the two scans that may have a hard time aligning. So we just slowly rotate it one step here. And it's going back to that panoramic analogy that I used. Mm -hmm. If there's too much of a gap between the if you move too the fast, pictures, or, yeah. it's not gonna be able to merge them together. Mm -hmm. Hence the reason why we're doing this in a uh, orientation where we can build upon from the previous one. Okay. And then you're just printing it out on this machine. And then it'd be printed yeah. out over here exactly. So in this mm -hmm. case, actually, let's go with this guy. I'm going to start the. Yep. Mm -hmm. So this is the elephant that was scanned in. Mm -hmm. How many passes did you do on this? Two or three or three. four? Three. Three. Mm -hmm. And this was the output that was created, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can see the level of quality. Even that tail came out completely. Mm -hmm. How long did it take to print this guy out? Mm -hmm. It was a four to five hours print job. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, how often are you going to be printing out an elephant? Depends on on how much you you know love elephants, mm -hmm. but even with this, you can start out. Whoops! Mm -hmm. you can start off by killing the elephant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, start out by this. You can then take it to a full size type elephant, or if you want, you could just print off the head of the elephant mm -hmm. and put it up on your on, on your wall or anything of that sort. Mm -hmm. Similar fashion. Mm -hmm. I scanned in the sphinx mm -hmm. and then printed the sphinx out. Now this is a one to one. Mm -hmm. But imagine printing this at a much larger scale, where it now becomes a lawn ornament. Mm -hmm. You have the ability to do it. Or here's a much more likely use case. Mm -hmm. Start out with something organic like this shell. Mm -hmm. Now, there's unique aspects to this that you cannot necessarily get off the web. Mm -hmm. From here, you would then take it, mm -hmm. using 3D Builder in this case, hollow out the center of it. Now you've got something that's organic mm -hmm. that you can then use as a pencil holder, or you can use it as a flower pot or something like that. Mm -hmm. You can also take vertical slices of this, similar to the analogy that I was drawing with the elephant, mm -hmm. where you can then manipulate it around and put it into other objects there as well. Mm -hmm. cool.